Okay, we've looked at how to do test if we're using, if we have a single categorical variable and we want to see if it fits some assumed distribution. If we have two categorical variables, what we're going to be doing is testing to see if there's an association between the two. So for example, in this problem, is there an association between the use of painkillers during pregnancy and the likelihood of miscarriage? Scientists interviewed 1,009 pregnant women soon after they got positive results from pregnancy tests about their use of painkillers around the time of conception or in the early weeks of pregnancy. The scientists then recorded which of the pregnancies were successfully carried to term. The results are in the table below. NSAIDs are a class of painkillers that includes aspirin and ibuprofen. Does there appear to be an association between having a miscarriage and using painkillers? Okay. So, previously, we just took the proportion or the probability that was given, multiplied it by the sample size to find each expected value. When we have it in a table like this, or when we're looking for an association, there's a different way we need to get it. To get the expected count, we're going to take the row total multiplied by the column total and then divide by the sample size which is n and we do that for each cell so let's do that we have 75 times 145 divided by 1009 gives us 10.78. Then 75 times 864 divided by 1009 gives us 64.22. Then 172 times 145 divided by 1009 gives us 24.72. And then 172 times 864 divided by 1009 gives us 147.28. Then 762 times 145 divided by 1009 gives us 109.50 and 762 times 864 divided by 1009 gives us 652.50. So what is the contribution to the chi-square statistic for the cell with NSAID use and miscarriage? Well, the contribution is just doing the calculation for each cell in the chi-squared formula. So we do observed minus expected squared over expected. And for the NSAID said and miscarriage, it's this cell, so it'd be 24 
minus 24.72 squared over 24.72. Oh, I have the wrong values. It's insets in miscarriage. So that's 18 minus 10.78 squared over 10.78, which gives us 4.84. So the contribution for that cell is 4.84. Now it asks us to find all six contributions, so that means we're going to be doing observed minus expected squared over expected for the other five cells. So we have 57 minus 64.22 squared over 64.22, which gives us 0.81. Then 24 minus 24.72 squared over 24.72 gives us 0 0.02. Then 148 minus 147.28 squared over 147.28 gives us 0 0.004. 103 minus 109.5 squared over 109.5 gives us 0 0.39. And 659 minus 652.50 squared over 652.50 gives us 0 0.465. Let me just check that one. So 659 minus 652.5 squared divided by 652.5, yes, 0 0.648. So 0 0.065, keeping it at three decimal places. Now we want the value of the chi-square statistic, where chi-squared is simply adding all these values together. So we have 4.84 plus 0 0.81 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.004 plus 0. 39, is that what it is? Zero. Yep. Plus 0 0.065 gives us a total of 6.129. So the degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom is number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. So it would be 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, which is 2. The p-value is chi-squared CDF of 6.129. 2 degrees of freedom gives us 0 0.0467. 
So then it says using a 5% significance level, what is the conclusion of the test? So using a 5% significance level, We barely reject because the p-value is not that much smaller. H sub 0 and conclude that there is evidence of an association between painkiller use and the risk of miscarriage. That's our conclusion in context. But then it asks, if there is an association between having a miscarriage and using painkillers, describe how the two variables are related. So by far, the largest contribution The chi-squared comes from the insets and miscarriage cell. And we see that the number of miscarriages is much larger than expected. For those expectant mothers taking insects in early pregnancy. However, the risk of miscarriage does not appear to increase with the use of acetaminophen.
This was not an experiment. So we should not conclude that insets necessarily cause miscarriages. Remember, we can only say the association is causal if it's been an experiment, because then we are able to control the random variables and control for confounding variables, which we cannot in this case.